I just don't like my feet just feeling like puddles and it feels like everything is just hot, steamy and moist. I just can't do it. I can't do it. Sorry. Hi, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I'm your unproductive bestie. Today I wanted to talk about trends that I will be skipping out on for fall and winter and some trends that I will be participating in. Quick disclaimer, when I talk about trends that like I won't be participating in, this does not mean that you also do not need to participate in and this does not mean that I'm bashing those trends. But anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. The first trend that I'm gonna be skipping out on will be the buckle boots. I think everyone has seen those Miu Miu buckle boots. I think they're absolutely stunning, very gorgeous, but for me personally, I feel like I'm gonna fall out of love with them very quickly. I would rather pay money to buy a simple pair of boots, so that way, even though I might just have one or two pairs of boots, they're boots that I feel like I can wear for a longer time and with different outfits. I already have wide calves, which makes it extremely hard to find good boots at a reasonable price. So overall, for me, it's just more so about versatility and catering to the fact that I have wide calves. The next trend that I won't be participating in are wool trench coats. <sighs> Here's my thing with wool trench coats. I don't know if this is just a me problem, but whenever I find a wool trench coat, the sleeve never hits my wrist. The sleeve is always short, Right, let's say my hand is like straight, it's short, and then I bring my hand up, it's even shorter, and that bothers me. And let's say I size up in order for those sleeves to hit my wrist. That trench coat is swallowing me whole. I'm basically swimming in it. I'm not wearing it, it's wearing me. And beyond even just like the wrist, I don't know why, but I tend to find wool trench coats very itchy. I don't think it's wool altogether, because I've worn wool skirts and those are very comfortable to me, but wool trench coats tend to be very itchy on me. And if I find that they're not itchy, the wrist problem happens. It's just, yeah, it's just too many cons. So I'm just gonna have to skip out on that. I can't put myself through that. But let's say if I do find a wool trench coat that fits me well, the sleeves are good and it's not itchy, I'm definitely purchasing it. But for the time being, I put my comfort first. I gotta put me first. I gotta put me first. I gotta put me first, Lucian. The next trend that I will not be participating in is any fur-lined or sheep-lined boots. I'm so sorry, but those make my feet so sweaty. I don't know how people do it. I don't know if it's just, once again, a me problem, but each time I wear something like Uggs, my feet feel incredibly moist and hot. And you might be like, oh, just wear it in colder weather, wear it in a good temperature. I am. I'm wearing it during the cold and my feet are steaming hot. Additionally, they don't have zippers, which I, well, I can't say all of them. I haven't seen all Uggs, I haven't seen all bear paw shoes, but I prefer convenience in boots. I don't want to have to slide my foot in and that's too much, give me a zipper. <laughs> Give me a zipper. Additionally, I don't know if I'm just not remembering this correctly. Aren't you not supposed to wear Uggs in moist conditions? So like when it rains or when it snows, you're not supposed to wear your Uggs, which to me just doesn't make sense because they're fur lined. So exactly. To me, it just doesn't make sense. Also, you're supposed to waterproof them if you want to wear them in moist conditions. And even that doesn't stop damage from happening to the boot. See, mm, I'm just gonna have to skip out on it. This is coming from someone who actually owns a pair of Uggs. Let's get into the positives, cause I don't want this video to be completely negative. So here are the trends that I will be participating in. First are layer jackets and vests. I don't know if you guys have been seeing them, but I love it so much in the dimensions that it creates. I love seeing someone have like a smaller leather jacket inside and then a long trench coat over it or like a vest and then another vest and then a jacket or a vest and a jacket, just whatever it is, just outerwear stacked up. There's just something about it that just chef's kiss, makes a simple outfit look so extravagant. It just makes an outfit, at least to me, a bit more interesting. The next trend that I will be participating in is leather on leather. I don't know if you guys have been seeing it, but I've been seeing it in small doses. And when I mean leather on leather, I don't mean it in the sense of how we do denim on denim. I'm not talking about like 
leather pants and leather top, even though there is that, but I'm just talking about leather in any type of way. So like leather boot, leather trench, leather boot, leather skirt, or like a trifecta, leather top, leather skirt, or leather bottoms and leather boots. I don't know why, but I adore that combination. It just has to be done right. But during fashion week, I saw a lot of leather on leather and I was just like, yes, I love this. And it didn't look tacky at all. It just looked very nice, very neat most of the time. Cause usually when we see leather on leather, it's usually looked at as tacky, but I don't think it's tacky. I think it's very nice. And while we're on the topic of leather on leather, the next trend I will be participating in is denim on denim. Of course. Of course. Of course. But when I talk about denim on denim, I'm talking specifically about darker denims. So like black on black, gray on gray, or indigo blue on dark indigo blue, like those, those types of dark denims. I feel like denim on denim is usually looked at as very low effort, but it's about the structure of the denim on denim, and then additionally, how you accessorize it. So like a bag, a hat, your shoes, maybe a scarf. Like, what are you gonna do with it? Like, I just love seeing denim on denim, so I would definitely be participating. The next trend I will be participating in is ties. Okay, so here's the thing with ties. I feel like they've been popular for a while now, especially when everyone was doing the whole early 2000s thing, and they were using ties as headbands or using ties to like throw around their necks, kind of like as scarves. I personally was not into that, so I didn't buy into it, but I was able to recognize when I do like ties, and that's when they're worn traditionally, but with mismatched outfits, if that makes sense. So let's say you're wearing like a corporate looking skirt, a blouse, and then a tie, and then a varsity jacket. I don't know what it is about that, but I love it. I love it so much and I think it just looks so good. The thing though that I did realize is that I'm only gonna buy one tie and it's one black tie. I've already bought it, it was like $2.35. But I was able to understand my limitations with that trend so that lets me know that I shouldn't purchase more than one. And let's say I do want a variety in ties. I'm going to go into my dad's closet and take one of his ties. I'm not going to purchase more. And the last trend I will be participating in and have been participating in is metallics. I just love silver and metallics, but in like accessories. So whether it's jewelry or a purse or shoes. That's the end of this video. I hope it wasn't too negative, especially when I was talking about what I won't be participating in. But if you enjoyed this video, please let me know which trends you're excited to participate in and which trends you won't be participating in but you enjoy seeing on other people. Other than that, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you can, please watch my other videos. I have a lot of fashion related videos and I do have one entertainment related video. So thank you, bye.